Before we start drinking our green teas, we should first talk about the chemical composition of green tea. There are a few different chemical components in the tea leaf, and they all serve different functions when it comes to the taste and the health properties of the tea plant. We created this video so that we could have a guide of the chemical composition of green tea. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel and like this video to see more like it in the future. If you'd prefer to read about the chemical composition of green tea, we have a great blog article on our website, neoteas.com. We'll put the link in the description below. Without further ado, Let's get started. First, we have the green tea polyphenols. An important part of the chemical composition of green tea is polyphenols. Polyphenols are natural compounds in the tea plant that give the drink a lot of its trademark flavor. The term polyphenols includes smaller subgroups of flavonoids, phenolic acids, and tannins. The largest subgroup within polyphenols is flavonoids. The bitter or astringent flavors you get from tea are likely because of the presence of these flavonoids. It's believed that flavonoids are the chemicals produced by the plant in order to defend itself against insects, bacteria, and fungus. Teas higher in polyphenols phenols are going to be unshaded sencha teas. You can identify these teas because they have less of a sweet flavor and more of a dry or bitter taste. Black teas will be significantly lower in polyphenols because during the oxidation process, the plant converts these polyphenols into theoflavins. Next we have catechins and antioxidants. One of the more talked about properties of the chemical composition of green tea is EGCG. EGCG, or epigallocatechin galli, is one of the more important catechins in green tea. It's thought to have strong antioxidant effects on the body as it protects it from free radical damage. When researchers study the health effects of green tea, EGCG is one of the chemicals they examine. Tannins are often misunderstood in the world of tea. The word has historically been used to describe the agents in wood that were used to tan animal skins. However, they are in fact a subclass of bitter polyphenols. Although tannins do exist in the tea, they are in very small concentration and therefore they don't contribute much to its overall taste. When you are describing the flavor of a tea, use the words catechins or polyphenols instead of tannins. Next we have enzymes. While the enzymes may not have much to do with the taste of the tea, they have everything to do with the tea's transition into an oolong or a black tea. The two main enzymes in the tea are polyphenol oxidase and peroxidase. After the tea leaf is picked, the cells begin to break down and these enzymes are able to convert the polyphenols into theoflavins and theorubigans. This process turns the color of the leaf from green to brown, just like how an apple changes from yellow to brown after it's bitten and exposed to the air. Next we have the amino acids. When it comes to the flavor of a green tea, one of the most important parts of the chemical composition of green tea comes down to the amino acid profile. The most common amino acid in tea by far is L-theanine. This is actually a very rare amino acid in the plant kingdom as a whole. It was discovered in green tea as recently as 1949, and to this date it has only been identified in three species of plant and fungus, Camellia sinensis, Ilex weyusa, and a species of bolete mushroom native to North America and Europe. L-theanine is thought to be responsible for the reported calm, alert feeling that tea is famous for. It is also thought to increase alpha brainwave activity, leading to a greater sense of relaxation and a way to decrease mental and physical stress. Next we have the volatile compounds. Probably the least talked about part of the chemical composition of green tea is the volatile compounds. Although these aren't talked about much, they are one of the most important parts when it comes to the flavor and the aroma of the tea. Primary volatiles are the chemical components emitted by plants when they are attacked or damaged. Secondary volatiles can be brought out of the plant during the production process. In the context of tea, they are responsible for these beautiful floral or nutty notes you may get with the tea. Here are a few that may be worth knowing. Hexanol, which contributes to the fruity and grassy flavors. Hexanol, which contributes to the herbaceous and woody flavors. Linalool, which contributes to the floral, sweet, and woody flavors. Geraniol, which contributes to the rosy, floral, or geranium flavors. Pentanol, which contributes to the almond or malty flavors. Benzenacetaldehyde, which contributes to the hyacinth or lilac flavors and aroma. Caffeine. Let's discuss the thing most tea drinkers seem to be interested in. Caffeine. Caffeine is something that exists in all different types of teas. While some teas are significantly higher in caffeine than others, almost all teas naturally contain some level of caffeine. Caffeine levels in tea range from low caffeine teas like kukicha to very high caffeine teas like gyokuro and matcha tea powder, which can have as much caffeine as a cup of coffee. Why is caffeine part of the chemical composition of green tea? Let's quickly learn a bit about why tea has caffeine. The tea plant naturally produces caffeine as an insecticide to protect its leaves from the insects. The younger, more tender sprouts of the tea plant are more vulnerable Vulnerable, so they need to produce more caffeine. The older, more mature leaves at the base of the tea plant are tougher and less likely to be eaten by insects, so they will produce less caffeine. This means that when a tea is made from older leaves, the chemical composition of green tea will be different. Teas made from older tea leaves will contain less caffeine, and teas produced with younger tea leaves will have more caffeine, all else being equal. An example of this is a tea called bancha. Bancha is a tea made from the older leaves of the tea plant, and it contains less caffeine than a normal sencha, which is made from the younger leaves of the tea plant. This is a nice tea to enjoy in the late afternoon or evening, especially after a meal. The flavor is a bit softer with notes of popcorn, cereal, and wood. 
It contains 40 milligrams of caffeine, less than half the amount in a small cup of coffee. Changing the chemical composition of green tea by roasting. Another thing that changes the chemical composition of the green tea and reduces the caffeine content is roasting. During the roasting process, the caffeine in the tea is reduced slightly, making fully roasted teas like hojicha a good option for the afternoon or evening time. With hojicha, you may expect to get around 40 milligrams of caffeine per cup, compared to a regular sencha which can have about 60 milligrams of caffeine per cup. If you really want to lower your caffeine intake, you can go for a roasted stem tea or cookie hojicha, like this one from Mr. Issen. Not only is it lower in caffeine than a normal hojicha, the stems also roast differently than the leaves, giving the tea a much darker flavor, almost like coffee. I hope you've enjoyed this guide to the chemical composition of green tea. If you'd like to try some of these teas for yourself, you can help support our channel by going to neoteas.com and browsing our selection of premium Japanese green tea. We would also really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel and like this video so that you can see more tea videos in the future. If you have any questions about green tea or tea in general, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.